hello again. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I haven't done an introduction in a while. If you're new here, my name is Casey and I am the designer behind Pattern Scout. I design sewing patterns. I have this YouTube channel where I share all sorts of sewing tutorials and sewing inspiration and a little bit of behind the scenes of how I operate as a pattern designer and a seamstress. So welcome. And today I am continuing my fall wardrobe sewing series. If you haven't watched my other fall wardrobe sewing series videos, I've put links down in the description to previous videos. So currently I am working on a trench coat, kind of a vintage inspired, kind of 70s inspired trench coat. A couple of videos back, I traced a blazer that I already own. It's a cute little corduroy blazer that I thrifted. I showed a method for tracing that and creating a pattern from an existing garment without destroying the existing garment. And then in the last video, I created a muslin and did kind of a test sew of the pattern that I created from that garment and it went pretty well. There were a few things that I wanted to update, so if you haven't seen that yet, go back and watch that video. So I spent today working on the updates to this trench coat, and the main things that I wanted to change about the trench coat was I wanted to widen the lapels and the collar to make them a little bit more of a dramatic lapel and also lengthen the lapel. I felt like it was a little bit too short, and since I'm making a longer coat than what the blazer is, I feel like having that larger, more dramatic lapel design is just gonna be more appropriate for the scale of the coat. And so I worked on that. I did some adjustments to the pattern, which I'll show you in a moment. And in addition to that, I do have some fabric that I wanna share with you guys. So I've talked a little bit about the fabric that I picked up for this trench coat. And this is a stretch twill that I found at Mood Fabrics. And I'm actually gonna pull it up here on my computer. So the name of this fabric is the Theory Coriander Stretch Viscose and Cotton Twill. So this is actually a close out fabric. So it means that they have a limited stock and it's probably a designer dead stock. And the fact that it's called Theory, it's probably designer dead, dead stock from the brand Theory. Mood Fabrics has a lot of fabrics like this. There'll be designer dead stocks that they pick up from designer brands that you know have an overstock of fabric. And then a store like Mood Fabrics will buy that fabric and sell it to you and me. Usually the dead stock fabrics are pretty reasonably priced. So anyway, I got this fabric with the intention of making a trench coat. And I talked a little bit about the evolution of this trench coat idea a couple videos back. So anyhow, this is kind of like a, I don't know, it's got kind of a green hue to it, but it's really like a brownish kind of khaki color twill. It's got some stretch to it. I got three yards of this, which I think will be plenty. I've already washed it and you can see how much stretch it has. So I think it's gonna be really comfortable for a coat like this. And so for a trench coat, I really do think a twill, like a cotton twill or a stretch twill is a great fabric to use for that. It's gonna be lightweight and durable. And this is a coat that I plan to wear in the fall and the spring. Some other fabrics that I thought of that would be really cool for this jacket, like corduroy would be great. And that was actually the fabric that the original blazer was made out of that I copied. And then some of the inspiration images that I found for this coat were actually in suede, which I think would be so cool. So even like a faux suede would be really nice or even a pleather. Like if you wanted to do something leather or pleather, I think that would look really cool too for this type of jacket. So you have a lot of options there. And then of course you could do it in wool, um, any kind of coating material, I think a jacket like this would be great. I get a lot of questions about choosing fabric and ordering fabric and how to know which fabric is the right fabric to use for your project. I probably sound like a broken record saying this again and again, but it takes practice. Just like sewing takes practice, it takes practice to learn more about different types of fabrics. You just kind of have to be willing to kind of put yourself out there and learn a little bit more and be a little curious about different types of fabrics. And one tip that I have for basically not blowing a bunch of money on fabric that you end up not, not liking is to order samples. And I've talked about this a little bit more in the last few videos, and especially for projects where the color of the fabric or the fiber content or the weight or even the pattern on the fabric is really important to me, I'm gonna order samples just to make sure that I get it right. I did order some <laughs> lining fabric for this trench coat. One of the places where I usually order lining fabrics is Vogue Fabrics, and they're based out of Chicago, I believe, well, Evanston, Illinois, which I think is close to Chicago. So a fabric that I think is really good for a lightweight jacket lining is gonna be a Rayon Bemberg. It is very, slippery. It can be a little bit tough to work with sometimes, but it is just a really nice lining fabric. Vogue Fabrics has a nice selection of Rayon Bimberg colors. So I ordered some fabric from them and at the same time I went ahead and ordered one of their sample cards and this is what their sample card looks like. This was only I think five dollars. Yeah, so it was like five dollars for a sample card. So I ended up ordering their copper Rayon, Rayon Bimberg, which is this. 
It is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful color. However, I really don't like it with the color of my jacket. So I'll kind of try to hold this up and show you. But I don't love that. And it's a little bit too much of a contrast. It goes to show you how sometimes the image on the website doesn't match up with what you're expecting to get in the mail. I did go back and order some of this olive green here. I think this will be really nice. Um, it'll be a little bit darker than the jacket color. And I think it'll look nice to have that darker lining on the interior. Okay, I could talk about fabric all day long and I certainly tried for this video and I didn't really have a great transition to this next part, but I wanted to show you guys the pattern adjustments that I did for the trench coat, starting with a full bust adjustment. To start, I just cut a slash up the dart to the dart point, then cut a slash the length of the bodice up to that same point, leaving myself a little pivot point. And then I did another slash from the arm side where it connects to the side bodice and created a pivot point at the side of the arm side. I slipped in some extra paper to tape this and then I taped it so that I had an inch of extra width in the bodice which created a little dart at the side and that also added a little bit of length down to the bottom of the bodice so I added some paper there and taped it to kind of true that and you can see I have a little dart now. I also wanted to bisect the bodice for the front bodice and the side bodice to match up with the waist seam at the back bodice so I did that and I made sure to add seam allowance to all of those pieces where I cut. I also decided that I wanted to lengthen and widen the lapel. So again, I taped some extra paper underneath. I cut off the seam allowance and I just added an inch to the width of the lapel and then tapered it down to the waistline. And then I also made sure to add my seam allowance back on. And because I extended that lapel down to the waist, I also need to alter the roll line of the lapel. This is where the lapel is gonna fold over. So I'm just redrafting that roll line from the same point at the neckline down to the waist point. And this is how the lapel will operate on the new garment. Next, I just altered the collar to match by adding an inch at the top of the collar. And you can see here how that's gonna match up with the point of the lapel. And I also made sure to, again, add my seam allowance and trim off all of the excess paper. And this piece will be cut on the fold. Okay, so to create the facings for this jacket, I'm just going to first trace around this center front bodice piece. So I'll trace all the way around it, and then I'm going, going to divide this into two pieces. So I'll basically have the facing piece, and then the other side will become part of the lining. And of course, I made sure to add seam allowance to both pieces. I also cut apart the pieces at the waistline the same way I did for the other bodice pieces, although it really wasn't necessary for the lining because I end up cutting that as one piece anyway. I'm also going to take apart the old muslin that I have and reuse as many of the pieces as I can just to conserve my fabric. Okay, so I went ahead and tried on the bodice. I haven't added the sleeves or the collar yet, but I just wanna make a couple of notes of things that you can already see just by doing this full bust adjustment. So for one thing, the lapel lays a lot more naturally. The original muslin, it, because it was pulling so much, it just wouldn't let that lapel kind of lay as, as open as it wants. So you can see now it comes all the way up to here and I only added an inch. So the original might have come into about right here. So I think adding the darts definitely helped and doing that little bit of a full bust adjustment. The only thing is they are a little bit low. I think you probably need to raise them up about an inch. Um, but yeah, pretty happy with that. I may actually go through and slim this a little bit because you'll remember once I did the full bust adjustment here, it added an inch of width. So I may just kind of start up here and just kind of slowly taper out to slim this a little bit because I think that's really more ease than I really need. Now I think I'm very happy with with those changes so far. I really like that this is coming down lower too. I think that's going to be a really nice look for this jacket with it being a little bit longer. I think it'll just be more proportional. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and I'm going to sew the sleeves on just to make sure that I like how everything's fitting and I'll put the collar on and then I think I think this might be my last muslin. Okay, so I've got the sleeves on here and um, and the collar, and I'm pretty pretty happy with how this is going. I kind of pulled in the shoulder 
a little bit. So like just on the bodice, I brought the sleeve in about a half inch here and I like that a lot better. But over on this side, it's kind of falling off my shoulder a little bit. So I really like, almost fell over. <laughs> I really like where this is going. I like the length of the sleeves as they are right now. So I probably will add um, another two inches to that just to give myself plenty of room for folding under the sleeves when I bag the lining for this, uh, which I will go over. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll go over all of that once I start putting the jacket together. I'd like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who's interested in exploring their creativity and learning new skills. I love Skillshare. I know you guys have heard me talk about Skillshare here on the channel before, not just for sponsorships, but I also have a few classes of my own on the platform. And even before I had classes on the platform, I was using it to expand my own creative skill set. Even when I first started sewing my own wardrobe, I, I had sewing experience, but I turned to Skillshare for additional help in learning how to sew clothing. I've mentioned Caroline Somos's video on how to choose fabrics for your project. And a class that I'd like to share with you guys today is a class by another member of our creative sewing community, Denise Bayron of Bayron Handmade. And in this class, she walks you through some of the basics of getting started sewing your own clothing. And she's just an incredible teacher. She has a very calm demeanor and just seems like a really cool person in general. So I definitely recommend you check out her class. I have checked it out. I mean, it came out not that long ago, but I also watched it myself because I think it's just a good idea to diversify your education and learn from all different types of creators. And the nice thing about Skillshare is that you don't have to deal with ads. It offers a totally ad-free learning experience, which allows you to stay focused on learning new skills. New premium classes are added every week. So there's always something new to discover. If you are interested in exploring more classes on Skillshare, they are offering a one month free trial to the first 1000 people that click the link in the description below this video. Okay, let's get back to making this coat. It is the next day and I am planning to cut my fabric today. So I was kind of looking through my thread and thinking about other supplies that I would need to get. I still need to get some thread. I have some thread here. I just don't think I have enough. So I need to get some more thread. And then I also need to find some buttons. I think I'm going to go with like a really cool large tortoiseshell button style. So I think today, today's Friday, I'm kind of getting a late start today. It's like already afternoon. Um, I went and worked out this morning and then I got dressed and ready and spent like two hours scrolling TikTok, which is, you know, I'm not proud to say, but anyway, I got kind of sucked into the TikTok scroll and yeah. So I'm just gonna work on the shell today and get those pieces cut out. And then tomorrow I'll probably go to Joanne and get some interfacing thread buttons so yeah, I'm gonna get started doing that. Another thing too, I've gotten some feedback from people in the comments about my table height. And I'll be honest, like a few times people have commented on like the fact that I'm hunching over my table and it's like not good for my posture and it's, you know, it's not good for my back, it's bad posture. And it kind of irritated me a little bit cause I'm like, don't tell me how to stand. I was just like super resistant to the advice because of probably because of the way people said it. But then um, like a couple weeks ago, somebody commented and they were actually really nice about it. And they, you know, mentioned like, oh, you might want to have like a higher table or an adjustable table. And um, you know, they're right. I actually do crouch over this table quite a lot. It would be a lot more convenient if the table was higher. So for those of you that are concerned about my posture, um, the wheels are turning. I am working on a new setup for sewing and cutting on this table, mainly cutting because yeah, it is, it is a lot of like crouching over and I have a chair. I'm sitting in a chair right now, but like, it's just hard to pull it up here. Cause I've got a rug on. It's just a whole thing. So I need to raise my table. So I might work on that this weekend as well. Okay. Enough jibber jabber. I'm going to get started cutting. So I've got all of my pieces. I think this is all of the pieces for the shell and the facings cut here. There's my little sidekick taking a little nappy nap, being cute as hell. And then this is all the fabric that I have left. I ordered three yards of this fabric and this is all I have left. I almost did not have enough to cut this. I had to kind of get creative when I was piecing everything on my fabric. 
That's why I really like to use one of these little Chaco liners because I like to lay everything out on my fabric first before I cut to make sure that I have plenty of room and it's kind of, it kind of becomes like a puzzle piece. And I actually like it when this happens because, you know, I don't want to have a lot of fabric left over because then I don't know what to do with it. I also have to do some little facings, some pretty narrow facings for the pockets. I'm going to do inseam pockets here. And that's one thing I kind of keep telling myself like, oh, don't forget the pockets because um, yeah, I didn't really, I probably really should have drafted like a little facing on the edge of the bodice pieces where they match up right there with that princess seam. I forgot to do that. So I'm just going to add a facing on there, but that won't take much fabric. And then the rest of the pocket will be made out of the lining fabric. So it is now, it's 2.48. It feels so late. I think it's because it's kind of gloomy outside. It took me, oh, it probably took me a couple hours to get all of that cut. And then I also had to draft the facings. So yeah, I thought I was going to try to sew some stuff together today. I think I'm actually going to just import this footage and start getting that footage prepped. Um, I'm kind of tired again, probably because I'm crouching over my table. You guys are right. I need to get a higher table. Um, so I do get kind of fatigued pretty quickly, especially when I do a lot of cutting. So uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna take a break. Today is Monday. This weekend I took a little bit of a break from the trench coat project and worked on a couple of, I'll just go ahead and say it, I worked on a couple of patterns that I'm work, that I'm developing, working on developing new patterns. <laughs> a couple of pretty simple patterns that possibly I will get out before the end of the year, so I don't know. Then this morning I popped into Joanne Fabrics really quick to pick up some interfacing, some buttons and some thread for this coat project. The kind of interfacing that I'm gonna be using is called weft interfacing. And I really like this interfacing for jackets in particular. And I also like to use it for making jeans as well, like interfacing the waistband and that kind of thing. Because it does stabilize the fabric, but it doesn't make it too stiff. And that's kind of something I want, especially for a jacket like this, for those lapels and the collars. For a trench style jacket that's out of this twill fabric, I think that will be the most appropriate interfacing for this project. I also found some really cute tortoiseshell buttons at Joanne Fabrics. I always get the tortoiseshell buttons. I feel like I'm so consistent with the tortoiseshell. That's just like what I go to consistently over and over again. So I did find some, some nice big tortoiseshell buttons that I plan to use for this trench coat project. And I think they'll work great. And so I'm only going to be interfacing the facing of the lapel. And then I think the, I can't remember if it's the under collar or the upper collar. I need to refer to a couple of references that I have because I always forget which one I want to do. So I'll do that now. Then I'll start working on sewing the shell of the jacket and moving forward with the construction. My lining fabric is supposed to arrive today for this jacket and I'll have to wash that today and hang it up to dry. So I'll probably, hopefully be able to work on that tomorrow. And once I get that started, I feel like the process is going to go relatively quickly. So let's just do this. Also, I have been watching this documentary on, it's a documentary series on HBO called Low Country, and you know, this stuff is crazy. It's, it's very, very interesting and, and kind of scary, honestly. ready to start sewing and I'm going to be using Guterman all-purpose polyester thread. I'm also going to be using a Schmetz universal sewing needle and I'm using the size 8012. I've added pocket facings at all of the pocket locations in the side seam and I'm just going to press this out away from the bodice and then top stitch that fold down at the seam allowance to have a nice clean finish. I'm going to be using flat filled seams for most of the seams on this jacket. So I'll start by sewing a 5 8 inch seam allowance, then I'll press the seam allowance open, then I'll trim one side of the seam allowance, in this case the bottom of the seam allowance, in half. I'll press both seam allowances toward the top, and then I'll fold the longer seam allowance over the one that I just trimmed and press that in place. Then I'll fold everything to the opposite side and press in place to conceal all of the raw edges in the folds. 
I'll take this over to the sewing machine and top stitch the edge of the fold down. I'm doing this from the exterior of the garment just because I want to make sure that I have a really nice neat stitch on the exterior. So I'm just kind of making sure that I feel for the edge of that fold under the garment and make sure that it stays folded under. And I'll do this for all of the seams. One thing I want to do is I want the edge of the pocket on the exterior to have the same flat felling detail as the seam where it runs into the top of the pocket. I'm gonna take this over to the machine and top stitch just this side of the pocket. I really just want this to be a decorative stitch that will line up with the flat felled seam stitching once I finish that. And I need to do it before I attach the pocket bags. Then I can finish the pocket bags and do the flat felled stitching on that front princess seam. And now you can see how that flat felled stitching looks along the pocket opening there. Now I need to cut pockets, pocket bags for the pockets and attach those. It'll be big enough for my hand, plus about an inch or inch and a half around the sides. I'm just gonna surge around the edge of the pocket bag just to finish that so it doesn't fray. It's not gonna be showing, it'll be hidden by the lining. And then I will attach this to the pocket facings and continue finishing the side seam. Now you can see how that flat filled seam matches up with the top of the seaming that I did for the pocket opening. And then I also went in and added bar tacks at the top and the bottom of the pocket opening as well. That just kind of helps conceal that transition between the pocket stitching and the flat filled seam stitching. And it's just gonna add some extra stability to the pocket opening and keep that from pulling apart over time. All right, so the coat is really starting to come together. I'm loving the direction this is going in. I got the collar sewn on, finished all of the flat filled seams except for on the back here. Um, I do need to finish the flap later and I'm still kind of deciding exactly how I wanna finish that. So I just did the flat filled seam to the center back waist seam here. So I'll finish that lower part later. I really wanted to get the sleeves on today and work on the lining a little bit more, but I just kind of ran out of time. I've got other things I need to work on. So I think for today, I'm gonna to call it quits. Um, I gotta do a little bit of video editing and get some things wrapped up. I really hope I can get this jacket finished tomorrow. I don't know for sure that it's gonna happen just because I have to do some editing and these things always take longer than I think they're going to take. So anyhow, we'll see what happens. Okay, so it was my second time filming this because that new microphone, I don't think it's gonna work out. Okay, um, so very happy with this. This is a shell of the coat. Obviously, I've got this all sewn together and I went with flat filled seams for all the seams. I think for a fabric like this, it just looks really nice and it's also just a really strong type of seam. It's gonna make sure that this really lasts a long time. I'm thrilled with this sleeve. I mean, these are like the little things about sewing that just make you really giddy and excited because there are no drag lines on this sleeve. This is probably one of the most beautiful sleeves I've ever made as far as the fit goes. And you know, this is why you want that curve in the sleeve because it does kind of follow the natural curve of the arm. One thing to note, you know, with a stretch fabric like this, I am getting a little bit of kind of waffling on some of the seams where I did that top stitching, which that is kind of to be expected because you are sort of, it's hard not to stretch the fabric as you're pulling it under the sewing machine. But that'll kind of work itself out over time. Right now, this this fabric is still kind of recovering from the stress of being pulled under the sewing machine. But since it is a, a stretch, it does have that recovery. It will kind of, you know, go back into place. So now I want to work on the lining for this jacket. Now the lining is going to be sewn together in the same sequence as the shell. 
The main difference for the lining is that the these front pieces here are divided into two pieces so that I'll have the facing piece and the lining, you know, on this. So I'll sew those together. That, those will continue to act as one piece. And other than that, the lining should come together pretty quickly. I like the pocket placement. It's They're really nice and deep. You can see here my little pocket bags. These will be hidden once the lining is in. Overall, very, very happy. I'm going to sew all the lining pieces together, and then I will attach those to the coat, and I'll talk a little bit more about how I'm going to finish the lining when I get to that point. So I'm going to cut the back bodice as is, but I am going to add an inch to the center back so that I can create a pleat in the back and give myself a little bit of wiggle room across the back of the shoulders. For the side bodice and for the front portion of the bodice, I'm going to cut those as one piece. Okay, so I have the lining complete and the lining is basically the same as the coat shell with a few modifications that we've already talked about with the facing addition on the front here on this front panel. And um, yeah, other than that, it's pretty much the same. One thing that I did do was I went in, let's see if we can see this. Oh, you cannot even see this, hang on a sec. Collar and the lapels are interfaced. One thing I did differently about the front bodice was instead of sewing in a dart, I just did a little pleat here because there's really no need to have a fancy little dart. So that'll give me the ease that I need there in the bust. And then on the back, let's see if we can see this. So on the back, I added a pleat to the back, the center back here. This is just gonna give me a little bit of wearing ease across the shoulders um, because one of the things about this blazer that was kind of bugging me was it was just too tight across the back and I did end up actually, I just split open the center back here to give myself some ease in the back. Um, so that's obviously not ideal. So I knew that I was gonna wanna add a little bit of that ease into the lining on the new coat. So here I just resolved that pleat at the collar stand here and then at the center back waist here. So everything else is pretty much the same as the shell. So now what I'm going to do is attach the lining to the shell. And to do that, I'm just gonna line up the lining with the shell right sides together along the lapels, go all the way around the collar and back down around the lapel and down to the other side. Okay, so we are in the home stretch on this jacket. Move this out of the way. Now it still looks a little unpolished, which I'm going to fix that. But you can see that's how the lining looks in there. It's really starting to come together. And I'm just next gonna go around and make sure that all of these edges are really nice and pressed flat so that I can do the top stitching. Um, I think this is gonna be great. I like how the lapel turned out. Um, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and it's this is why I love making outerwear because it does it does involve so much detail work and you know special techniques and a lot of times it feels like you're just working on this huge lump of fabric that's really 
frustrating to handle and deal with. But then once you sew that lining in and you flip this thing right side out, it really starts to move quickly. So I really don't have much left to do to put the finishing touches on this jacket, which is exciting. So I've pre-pressed the two inches in the shell and the lining will be about right there. I probably need to trim off about an inch from the bottom of the lining. So just trim off this excess here. I just want to finish the bottom of the facing here. So I'm actually gonna turn this right sides together and I'm gonna sew along the bottom here. And then I also want to press a little fold in the edge here as I sew across that so that that edge will be finished. I'll do this on both sides of the front of the jacket. So I've got those corners sewn up here with the end folded over. I did the same thing at the center back flap. So one side of the flap will be folded over wide like this. The other side is just gonna, I'm just gonna have the seam allowance folded over like so. So now I just kinda wanna go through and flip everything right side out at the corners. So like there's the center back flap and you can see that corner is nicely finished. And I also wanna make sure that I trim all of the excess here. Now that we have the sleeves separated, we want to put like sleeves together and I'm just gonna trim the lining sleeves by about an inch. Now I want to make sure that I've got the shell sleeves on one side laying flat and the lining sleeves on the other side also laying flat and untwisted. I'm just gonna fold the lining toward the shell and then fold the shell toward the lining, fold down the raw edge of the lining sleeve so that I can tuck it into the shell sleeve and I want to line up all of the seams so the like seams to the like seams of the shell and the lining sleeve and pin that in place all the way around the perimeter of the sleeve opening and this is going to allow me to put the sleeves right sides together around the hem so I'm just going to sew around the hem I'm going to flip this over and do the same thing for the other sleeves making sure they're not twisted and I'm going all the way around the hem here making sure that I keep the sleeves out of the way of the hem and I'm going to sew all the way around the entire perimeter of the sleeve hem now I can flip the whole assembly right side out. And when I pull the sleeves out, right side out, the lining is going to automatically be inside of the sleeve and the hem will be finished. So now all I need to do is, I'm gonna go in and just hand stitch this little end closed and then the lining here right at this little transition here to make that look neater. I'll make sure everything's nice and pressed. The lining is just very slightly longer than where I sewed it basically. So now I'm not going to have to worry about the lining being too tight and pulling up the hem. Um, it'll kind of just, you know, blouse over a little bit, but it won't show on the bottom. I also need to go through and finish the flap opening here. So I'm just going to hand stitch this edge along this side of the flap here all the way down to here and I'll hand stitch that to close that up and then this part the part that overlaps I'll do the same thing I'll just kind of clean up this edge and attach the lining right along that folded edge of the flap there when I was cutting the lining I kind of cut it a little bit off just because this rayon bimberg is just so slippery um, this isn't really going to show and I can kind of clean this up it'll be fine but uh, yeah, I definitely cut it like a little bit too high there. So um, I'm going to finish it separately. So I'll finish the top of the lining in here to finish that off and make it all nice and neat. And the sleeves, same thing with the sleeves as the, as the bottom of the coat. You know, I cut the sleeves a little bit short so that when I turn this right side out, it kind of pulls the edge of the coat in a little bit. 
So it kind of creates a little hem there. And then the lining is concealed in the interior and the lining's not too tight that again, it's going to pull that sleeve up too tight. So anyhow, once I get all of the lining and everything stitched up, I'm just going to finish the top stitching along the front edge of the jacket, starting at the bottom of the lapel there, and then all the way down the front here. I'll do that on both sides. And then I'll just need to do buttons and buttonholes. 